Like it. Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, I'd like to return to something that we discussed way back in episode three of this series. And uh, that was way back in May, as I recall. Um, and kind of hit it from the viewpoint of all the stuff that we've done since then and go back and kind of fill it out and take it to another, a deeper level. Except you. And uh, the topic uh, that I'm referring to is reaching. And you've heard me discuss many, many, many times, uh, you know, to point and reach or to reach with your elbow or whatever. And it, um, I think it needs a little bit of an investigation, take it to, uh, you know, kind of peel away some of the layers because it's, we all understand what the word means, but there are unconscious blocks to actually implementing that in the fullness of the, uh, the term. So the, what I've discovered over the, over the years is uh, that, you know, I'll, I'll say something to reach and I'll say, okay, I'm reaching. And, and that will be, you know, there, there's a point there where it feels uncomfortable go, to go beyond. And there's the brakes get fired. People start to, they start to pull back at a certain point. There is a, an unconscious response to pull in. So the, uh, just like, you know, you reach out and you find something unexpected is that quick pullback. That's sort of a, a pre-conscious response. And that pervades a lot, of our, uh, a lot of our actions. I mean, some of it is nature and some of it is nurture. You know, the, obviously the, you, you touch a stove and you pull back right away. That's, that's not, that's not coming from up here. That's happening way down in the, in the spinal cord, that, that immediate response. But there's uh, some parts which are nurture, which are the ideas of I reach in, I get my hand slapped, you know, that, that kind of thing. There's a, a tendency to not want to extend too far. You know, the idea of don't stick your neck out or you'll get it chopped off kind of idea, which is something which pervades a lot of uh, our upbringing. And so consequently, there's built into our adult body mind, a reluctance to extend beyond a certain point, to actually to feel into that. And just to go back to the idea of why is it important to reach? So I draw a distinction here between, let's say using my arm, between pushing my arm out and reaching with my fingers. So the, the movement looks pretty much identical, but what's happening inside is very different, polar opposites. So in a, in a sense, it's whatever I'm reaching, my arm is kind of being pulled out. Whenever I'm pushing it out, I'm extending and using muscular contraction to, to make that, to make it go, to make it go out. And both get the job done. Uh, but the, in the reaching, what happens is we're using an entirely different system. We're using the sinews to make that happen. And that is where the gin is um, stored, is not stored, is manifested, is generated. There we go. That's the word. We generate the gin through the sinews, through the connective tissue system. And in Taiji Tran, through the Western Gate, I talked about why that might be the case. I thought I presented a, a fairly decent scientific examination of the connective tissue system as a liquid crystal matrix, which is highly resilient and it has the capacity or a, um, a quality of tensegrity. That is that the force is uh, not happening as a 
uh, result of solid things pushing against other solid things, but actually an extension, uh, a distribution of energy throughout the whole system. And uh, so we, whenever we reach, we have this, we activate the tensegrity of the, of the system, which then makes it into a non-local event. You're not restricted to, let's say my arm isn't the only thing doing the work. Whenever, whenever I push it out, it's all just happening. There's this, you know, pulleys and gears and, and things are rubber bands are pushing things out there. But the, whatever I reach, then it's happening throughout my whole body. And that extension there activates the wholeness, the coherence of the entire system. Everything is tied together and it allows for us to activate the gin, which is a whole different than the crude muscular force, which is used, we use the term Li to, uh, to, to, to use that. So there is a conscious decision to reach and kind of tying it in with something that I was talking about a few weeks ago, that is the, um, in the, the Taoist model, we, it begins in the Wu Ji and moves to the Tai Ji and then from there to the Yin Yang, there to the heaven, earth and human to the 10,000 things. And that's sort of the, the model for the cosmology and the creation. And it's not something that is, it just happened a long time ago. It's not like a biblical, the biblical myth where, oh yeah, God created a long time ago. It's no, this is something that is being replicated each moment. And in the human mind, we are recapitulating Tao. And we're going from the emptiness into a state of undifferentiated wholeness to differentiated wholeness, that is yin and yang, to then we move and takes various forms of manifestation. Why is that important? This is the model for every movement in the Taiji form, and by extension, life. So if you, whenever you consciously activate this process, there is a moment of emptiness that is, that precedes the beingness, that precedes the doingness. Okay, so we follow that. There's that moment of where we move to the gap between thoughts, the mind clears, and then we activate. Then we, we move into a form state. And the form goes from an ambiguous, undifferentiated wholeness into, oh, intention says, no, that. Intention says that. And whenever we say that, there's always a not that. There's always a yin and a yang. There's a polarity, a, a dichotomy, a duality to everything once you say that. And that is how the game, game goes. But there's this, it is a pulsing that occurs between the emptiness and the fullness. And that pulsing is what generates the energy. And when we get this into actually something as simple as reaching, we are doing it. We are, this is how we generate energy in that system. We go there, that split between the emptiness and the somethingness creates a further split into the yin and yang. And those poles in opposition are what generates chi, what generates energy. So the, 
putting it in very practical terms, there is a moment prior to the doing that we embrace the non-doing, we embrace that even prior to the being, there is a, a state of empty. And that may last a quarter of a second. But if you do that, then you kind of step outside of the limits of time and space. Whenever you do that, you kind of go and you're able to bend time and space. And that's where we get, you know, in the, in the classics, they say, my opponent begins before I do and I arrive before he does. You know, that's how time and space get bent around there. Why? Because in that state, you're not limited by the causal relations of, of the of physics. You can then step outside of that and you can generate your own set of circumstances, which you then get to call the shots in terms of how you want this next moment to play out. So in the form, in any form we do, any qigong we do, anything like that, there a key part of, of, of this is whenever we get to the yang expansion of a form, let's say it's a ward off posture and I get this, I'm in this yang expansion, okay? What's the next step? I empty out. And oh, there's a, there's a moment there where I dissolve that shape. If I don't dissolve that shape, then I'm trying to build on top of what's already there. I have to destroy, I have to destroy that posture in order to be able to create a new one. And if I can then go and the, if I can go to the emptiness and the closer I can get to that emptiness, which is a neutral pole, then the closer I can get to that, the more potentiality I have for any movement. I'm not limited to, oh, what's the next thing I'm supposed to do in this form? It's like, no, it's the possibilities are infinite. But I, I must go to the go to that 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 emptiness because the emptiness, even though it has zero manifestation, the Wu Ji has zero manifestation and it has infinite potentiality. So we have this. Whenever we go there, you know, Master Yang calls it the mystery. And, and I like that. It's, you know, we move to the mystery, which is the, in, in, the, in the Tao Te Ching, they say that is the, the mother of, of both the, the, the named and the unnamed. The named and the nameless, the mother of that is the mystery. And so we, we, we do that. So we, if we can do that, we are starting to approach this idea of Taiji Chuan as a spiritual path. We're starting to let go of the limitations of, of the, the body mind. And we're starting to play around with what else is possible at that point. And part of this idea is if I want to get past the pre-conscious limitations that I have I have accumulated either through nature or nurture. I want to, and this is the yin side of the spiritual path. There is, I slow everything way down and bring mindfulness to each movement. And feeling is the language of the body mind. Feeling. When we feel that and feel it and bring mindfulness to the feeling, then we can actually activate the hidden potentiality that's that's in the in the whole system, and of which we're tapping into a very small part right now. So the that poising at that moment of infinite potentiality, and then oh, what do I want to put here? There's an ought to, I ought to put this next thing because that's what I was told to do. Or there's also, oh, this feels right. 
and learning to be able to get into that feeling, getting finding the sweet spot in each moment, in each movement is is part of the the purpose of the of the practice, you know, of the kung fu. It's not just to, to get it right. It's to go beyond getting it right to getting it so that oh no, this is me. This is who I am. This is my creation at this point. And then cool stuff happens. And that doesn't mean that there aren't better ways of doing things. And some of them are already, you know, logged down for us so we can, we can learn a lot from those. But you still have to explore it in your own body and say, does this work for me? Is this, does this, is this the best expression of energy in this moment? Unmute. Um, okay, so, I mean, I get this. I get what you're saying uh, to a certain degree anyway. So we go to that, say, split second of empty, but we still exist. So, I mean, uh, we go to the empty, the possibilities are there, and it's the mother motherboard for, or jumping off place for Jin, for Chi, but that still exists in that emptiness, does it not? By virtue of the fact that, well, we're alive. We are definitely alive. And if you can get to an external viewpoint, and see yourself, you will witness your aliveness. But if you are, what we're talking about here is the, uh, the mind as Tao. We, in that moment, we are in the phase mentally of emptiness. So if you are watching yourself and witnessing your existence, then you are you are, uh, you're not in that phase, you're doing something else, which is fine. And we do that all, we do that a lot. We watch ourselves. We like to say, yeah, here I am, you know, and, uh, and but that is the next phase that we're talking about here, going from the emptiness, going into the somethingness, going into, into form, going into a state of being. So assuming being, so you can have the memory of, of what I was a minute ago, and that's fine. And but when you're doing that, you're not in the empty. You're in you're in your you're in your memory of what you used to be. And what we're talking about here is being able to shift out of that ongoing narrative that is being updated moment by moment by the default mode network of the brain, shift out of that into a whole brain state where objectively, yes, well, I am still here. Otherwise I wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be able to do these things, but mentally I have, I'm in a different phase. I'm not in that, I'm not in that state of update my narrative now. So it's the, the space between thoughts, basically. Basically. Okay. I mean, I, I kind of got that, but I still had to ask the question. <laughs> No, no, and, and that's, that's a very good question because it, it kind of gets into all kinds of philosophical stuff, which uh, Jonathan and I uh, hammer out repeatedly. But we're talking about some, uh, something that is uh, a tool for helping you to get your Tai Chi to the next level. And so we're, we're not talking about an absolute description of, of the state of the universe, we are talking about your relationship to the present moment. And, and so in that, that there is in that emptiness, you're not thinking about, I'm not thinking about Rick Barrett, you know, in that emptiness, there is no, there are no thoughts. Okay. And then, but from there, I'd move into a state of thinking and and creating and, and being and all that stuff. And we go forward from there. Okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, play with this. Okay, 
so step out. So first thing we're gonna do is get the three pillars in. So we do this in order to have an abundance of energy and a, and a highly coherent state and we're unkinking the hose. So we feel the balls of the feet, set the knees, reach with the crown. Relax the lower back and allow the Wei Lu to, to drop. Tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. And release the qua, sung qua, pointing with the index finger, feel the energetic coherence, reach with the elbows. And just familiarize yourself with the gap between thoughts. Notice the thoughts as they pop up. And notice that there's times when you're not thinking. It's in that gap that we move into a superconscious state. where we integrate body, mind, spirit. So bring your right hand up. Just feel into that. And point your index finger. And reach with the finger and relax everything else. Very sung, very relaxed. And feel into the tensegrity of the system. Set your elbow. As you do that, you reach out with your elbow. And then pull that back and just relax. And let that go. Now, just prior to reaching out with that, just feel into the emptiness. And now reach out with your elbow. And then relax and draw that back and dissolve back into the emptiness. And by emptiness here, we're it, mentally, what that means is the mind is clear. Now reach out, feel that. And establish that as your new base and dissolve into the emptiness here. Now, very slowly reach forward with the index finger of your right hand and just feel into your body as it reaches forward. And just notice what that feels like. And just notice where that starts to feel a little uncomfortable. And just hold that. Point the index fingers on both hands and feel into the emptiness again. Reach down with your elbow, draw the hand back. Feel into the emptiness again. 
Now reach with the arm, the elbow. And reach with the finger. And feel the opening, feel the connection throughout your whole body. Point to your index finger of your left hand as well. And feel the energetic connection between the two hands. So this reaching is a young extension. And then we reach down with the elbow and pull the hand back. And that's, that's a yin retreat. There's a reach and withdraw. So we're withdrawing and that yin withdraw takes us back in into the inside. Now, feel the emptiness and then feel the intention just to reach out and open. Reach down with the elbow, withdraw. Notice that each of these movements, there's discrete steps. We go from the emptiness to the intention to the action. Bring the right hand down. Feel your left elbow, reach with that. Open that up and feel into that. And relax that. And reach with your elbow. And feel into the, the gap between thoughts there. And relax. And reach out with the elbow. Point of your index finger. Feel, feel into the emptiness. Now get the intention and reach out. And just feel what that feels like inside your arm to extend all the way out. And just notice any restrictions that your body mind might have on, on that movement. That's very simple movement. And reach down with your elbow, withdraw. Yin. Elbow, set that. Empty. Intention, reach. Reach with your elbow, withdraw. Bring your right hand up. Feel into the empty. Set your elbows and then reach. Rotate your forearms as you reach out. Open. Feel. Reach down with the elbows. Withdraw. Empty, intention, reach. Reach down with the elbows and withdraw. So recently I've been talking about mobilizing the chi before you move. That's what we're doing here. In order to mobilize, you have to have separation. 
we have to create this polarity. So you establish the emptiness first, you get the intention. What's the intention? To, I'm going to reach. So I'm creating something new. I'm going from where I am now to where I'm going to be. And feel my fingers being pulled out. Reach with my elbows, rotate the forearms and back. And bring your hands down. So just notice your state, this, your state of being right now. Notice the super consciousness that you need to make this work. Larry R. Call from Larry R. Is it my phone? Yes. <laughs> I don't know where your phone Larry is. Larry R. <laughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> Turn this thing off. Okay, so I'd like, to, I'd like to take this to something we, uh, we did back in episode three, and that was the um, foundation exercises. The, uh, we're playing around with those and apply this feeling to that. So instead of it just being like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing this, it's not each, each moment, each movement is activated by a conscious intent. We don't just plug in and, and just kind of ride the momentum of prior movements. We actually go to that space for however long it takes to feel into that, to be able to actually knowingly, consciously make that turn. So the First of all, just uh, begin with that. Just bring your arms up, reach out with your elbows, point with your index fingers, and feel your three pillars. So you can see like arms are like at a 45, relax. Reach with your elbows so you open the shoulders and you're gonna be rotating the forearms. So notice that the elbow doesn't move. What I'm not doing is this, I'm not, going like that, I'm going just simply rotating like that. But each movement is a conscious intent. And prior to that conscious intent, there's a moment for however long to make that happen. So just do it at your own pace. And you turn inward like this, you reach with the thumbs. And you turn outward, palms up. You reach with the little fingers. So notice that that's a, another intention, the intention to reach with my thumbs. There's also an intention to reach with my index fingers. So I'm rotating around the axis of my index fingers.
Bring your hands down. Just feel into your body and feel the circulation, feel the chi. By moving slowly like this, bringing mindfulness to each movement, we're starting to cultivate the yin side of the, of, you know, the spiritual aspect of Tai Chi. We first have to let go of muscular constriction and let go of the, the shin, which is the, the heart mind. It's the, uh, uh, the emotional mind. And it's where, so that, that gets calm so that we can then open up to the E, which leads us into that super conscious state. Okay, so now bring up your right hand up your center line, up to your chest, and then reach forward. And the same process here, you feel the empty, and then you, as you initiate the movement, the left hand comes up, the right hand comes down. You spiral down into the quads, you do that, and reach out. Feel the empty, intention, mobilize the chi. Move. Feel the reaching. You're really opening up. Arms are very relaxed. Feeling them extending. Feel the energy moving through. Connecting. Your hands connected up to your feet. As you familiarize yourself with the gap between thoughts, you, it becomes easier to access that empty point, which then allows you to generate and to mobilize your chi. And bring your hands down. Just feel into that. And rotate your palms, rotate your form, palms out. Feel into the empty. Now, Reach out, lifting. Feel that. It's kind of like where a pendulum turns around. There's a point where it turns and goes the other way. But with a pendulum, that turning around point 
is almost infinitely small in terms of time. And in that space, in that, that infinitely small piece of time, we're able to create infinite possibilities. Gary Zukov does a really wonderful thing on in this on uh, on this on in uh, stalking the wild pendulum. If we can find that point in any moment, we can shift into that that turnaround place. We can stop and hold and just feel into the empty and then ultimately feel into the fullness and mobilize the chi. So momentum has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. Very consciously, very deliberately establish that intention. Let's hold that. Set your elbows, feel that, and bring your hands up a little bit so they're extending out in front of you, reaching down. Reach a little more with your elbows, open up the space there, empty out again. Allow your mind to alternate between empty and full. Allow your perception of a field to empty, alternate between empty and full. Set the elbows, bring the hands up. Reaching. So notice there's a yin side of the reaching and a yang side. The yang side is extending. Yin side is having the intention, but not necessarily the physical expression of that intention. And we do that, we create, by doing that we create more energy, we mobilize more chi by having the intention of reaching out even more, but not doing it. And bring the hands down. Uh, 
Mm. Now feel into the fullness. Now feel into the emptiness. down to the left, step in, take a deep breath, <laughs> and disappear the chi, empty out. Okay, grab a seat. How'd that go? Interesting. Um, everything from my knees down to my feet felt like granite. Is that a mark of just lots of chi or am I right or wrong or what? <laughs> it's what you felt. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, there's a certain fullness to granite. So uh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. well, every, different parts of the body were feeling different ways. The hands felt like uh, balloons, like um, dirigibles, while the legs felt like granite. So it was, Super interesting. Beautiful, beautiful. Scott. That was really flipping cool, first of all. Um, uh, something I've noticed is particularly, uh, well, in, in my form and doing this stuff, especially when I'm reaching, my body, there's a lot of things going on in my body these days. Uh -huh. My elbows are reaching, my back is adjusting. There's, you know, but small, you know, micro adjustments, it's all internal, but there's all this stuff going on now in my, in my body when I'm doing my form and doing that. Is that, uh, is that a experience that you have? Yeah, I think I think all of us have that. So it's like what we're running into is old patterns of movement that whenever we break it down to its simplest, its simplest uh, fundamentals, we run into all these things that have been added to all the baggage that we've been carrying from compensations that we've accumulated. Like I said before, nature and nurture, you know, we've accumulated these compensations along the way. And now here we are farther down the road and we say, okay, now how much of this do I actually need going forward? And so you start, you know, throwing out things that, that don't, uh, that don't work for you anymore. Maria, you have something? Yeah, but also as you're doing this, you start opening up the flows of energy as you you start unkinking things, and you could feel the flow of energy differently in different parts of your body, and that might also account for the weird feelings. Sure. You know, sure. just suddenly there's energy in a place where it wasn't going before. Right. Oh, and uh, you know, if uh, like we were working, Maria and I were working on a move the other day, and and she was noticing that. Whenever she reached her, her left arm out, you know, past a certain point, her back would tighten up. And it wasn't a necessary part of that of, of that reaching, but it's something that was was locked in there either due to injury or 
uh, you know, habit or, or whatever, you know, there was something that, that was tied in so that made it uh, a difficult, uh, you know, uh, created some resistance to the simple act of just reaching forward. And so I think all of us have that. And the reason why we are slowing this way down and bringing mindfulness to every one of these things and emptying out along the way is to be able to just take out the trash. <laughs> you know, we can, we can take out the trash so then we can start over again. We can create a new form, a new shape, a new movement uh, that's not dependent on the movement before it, that it is beginning anew, being generated. Yeah, Scott. So um, the experience, what the, uh, um, my experience is, is kind of the exact opposite of that. It's almost, it's more like things, my body is doing things that enhance the shape and the movement and the form. That's fantastic. That's, that's what we're going for. That's, that's the other side of getting rid of the, uh, getting rid of the impediments is, and you know, what else is possible? Newfound freedoms, newfound abilities, being able to, oh, oh, I've never, oh, I've never been able to move like this before, you know, and you're, uh, you're feeling light and, and agile and connected and powerful. And, you know, but it comes from that emptying out process. So it's not just learning this behavior and add it to this other behavior and string all these behaviors together and we have a form. It's like, no, no, there's this pulsing that occurs between something and nothing that is occurring every step of the way. And that is, that is where the power comes from. So cool. Dennis. Yeah, uh, you said a word, uh, you said release from the chin, was that C-H-I-N? Uh, uh, shin, uh, it's uh, uh, in pinion is X-I-N and in, uh, in, uh, Wade Giles is H-S-I-N. It refers to the, the uh, heart mind, okay. which is considered to be the uh, emotional mind and uh, you know, the part that gets uh, agitated. So being okay. able to, to release that and be able to go to the E, which is the wisdom mind. And that's the okay. uh, that's where we're, we're able to like uh, bring things into a state of order, and then whenever we get that, then we move into Shen, and so it's that that process of moving from E, which is a relaxed, conscious mindfulness, to the next step, which is body mind spirit integration, and that's where we get into. Shen, and there are different stages of Shen, you know, that okay. uh, spirit. And so that's, uh, that's uh, but the, the learning to relax your body is a key element in being able to calm the Shen mind, you know, the, the heart mind. Yeah. Well, I am finding the space between thoughts is getting longer as time right. goes on. That's great. And it's coming quicker and coming longer. Fabulous. That's that's what we're looking for. Being able to being able to regulate your mind so that you can go there anytime you want. Yeah. Being able to control your thoughts so that you can think or not think as you choose. And your body relaxes more with it. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the, the two go together. So there's a process that uh, you know, they, there's a, a sequence that in Taoism they talk about, which is converting essence to qi or uh, your jing, your essence, converting that to qi and converting qi to shen and converting shen to emptiness. Mm -hmm. And then the final stage, smash the emptiness. <laughs> so that's the, uh, uh, that's the uh, uh, that's the sequence that uh, that well, you know they they were cultivating with the with this. So the that first part there is getting your body mind in such a way that it's relaxed and sung and 
and let it go so that you can then, uh, you can convert your essence into chi. And so we're feeling that chi, but now as you're talking, you're saying, ah, this gap between thoughts now, this is where we're moving beyond chi and into shen. This is where the, the uh, where we're integrating spirit into the mix. Great stuff. Cool, Sand, you got something? Okay. Uh, is it safe to say that when we when when we're doing this uh, exercise, uh, after the uh, emptiness and the mobilization, after that point, the way the legs feel, it's safe to say that uh, as you once you start, that your root is increasing, getting deeper, or am I going too far? I, I, I would say that is usually the case. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, you know, when Rick was talking about concrete, you know, from, from the knees down to the feet, you know, that's, you know, the, getting that really stable root, which comes from, we're starting with central equilibrium and we're then amplifying it by, mm -hmm. by continuing to spiral upward with our, uh, with all these other things by, you know, if we keep coming back to the three pillars and we establish a new foundation at a higher order of being, then we, we, we the, 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 the root becomes more solid, the, uh, but also the whole body energetic connection oh, yes. and uh, all that other cool stuff. Yes, thank you. Rick, you had something? No, uh, Lynn. I'm going to try to ask this, but I'm not sure I'm going to be clear. Um, so the the experience that I had of, of doing the motion was wonderful, really, really uh, expansive, and had a lot of uh, you know integrity and fullness. And but the the way that you are talking about um, dissolving at each moment into nothingness and then returning, particularly when you were talking about doing it with the elbows, you, you kept saying, feel the emptiness or look, look yeah. for the, every time I, then it's mind that is asking, is it's going in search of the emptiness, which seems- That's, okay. right. That's what I'm talking about, feel. Yes, but- I'm, I'm not asking you to conceptualize it. I'm asking you to feel it. Don't, don't think, feel, feel. Uh, yeah, but well, okay, okay, well, all right, <laughs> try that. I mean, this is, a, this is, a, this is a, big, a big thing because a lot of times, you know, whenever we feel something, it's, oh, that feels warm or that feels sharp or that feels bumpy or whatever. There's an immediate narrative attached to the feeling. That wasn't it, that wasn't what I was doing. Right, okay. but it, it was the 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 instance to do to, but I was doing rather than being in order to sort of emotionally, physically, mentally, something you look for the emptiness. So there was an active looking for the emptiness rather than a being. I guess. Okay. So, yeah. and that, that wasn't what I wanted you to look for. I didn't want you to look for the emptiness. I just wanted to feel the emptiness. So, so what am I, is it because- but, but if it's not there, if it's not there, then you, you know, you, it's I not there. It, I think part of it was that you were saying it, <clears throat> right? So I was listening to you telling me to, right, you know, so maybe sure. if I do it on my own. Um, uh, could be. Um, I think in a super conscious state, we can learn to be able to do that. So we were able to maintain, like I'm able to maintain a super conscious state and talk to you, you know, and to answer questions and to be able to, to do all that stuff. So there's a, being able to shift quickly between different parts of the, uh, different parts of the brain for one of, for one of a better uh, idea there, to be able to shift quickly between them that allows you to feel the emptiness. So that requires having a familiarity with the emptiness 
so that you feel it in its ab uh, the absence of stuff, right? It's a, the insubstantiality of it is 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 the is the th so the the mind likes to look around for stuff, and th that is a that is a uh, that is a non-stuff. So, were you asking us to do that? Feel that absence of stuff in a particular joint, like an elbow? For because for me, it's just like everything: no stuff, stuff, no stuff, stuff. Like not in a particular space. Yeah, that makes. Sense. So I, I guess we'll figure out what you were asking us. This is uh, the limits of of, of my languaging. <laughs> you and know, my we're, bump, we're bumping up against uh, yeah how to express it so that everybody gets the joke is uh, is 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 a, a particular challenge and one that I am cursed with. But that is, uh, but I, I uh, that, that's the game I'm playing. So it's like, how do I talk about something that really can't be talked about? And uh, and so this is the best I'm doing right so far, <laughs> which is feel, feel the emptiness, which is, which obviously you can't feel the emptiness if the rational mind looks at it and says, what, you, you can only feel something that's there. And if it's not there, then you can't feel its absence. So. That's silly, Barrett. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. It is. It is silly. It's. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, <laughs> so you know, there's a, you know, if you were able to feel the absence of something, <laughs> this is what would that feel like? <laughs> you know? yes. And that's that's the uh, that's what we're going for here is that emptiness, and it's not an absolute. It, it, it can't be an absolute because your mind is is there to convince you that no that you are being there is <laughs> you have a form and you're you're alive and so that going you're never going to the nothingness in a complete sense you are always that but the closer you can get to that as an ideal the closer you can get to really the bedrock of this art. The, if you, your ability to really, you know, nobody gets to empty out entirely, but the closer you can get to that, the, the sharper your sword is going to be. Valerie, you had something. Um, what I found kind of fascinating, and I, I didn't do this a whole lot, but I got into this place of, yes, I would set the intention, like you would say, okay, you're raising your hands. I just kind of had my eyes half open watching you and I just gave over to following you. I didn't, I was pretty empty doing what you were doing. I didn't have to think about what I was doing. I was just, it was just going. So and I really appreciated that because <laughs> you know, I didn't have to stay with, well, keep the arms up, keep the, keep the arms going out, you know, point, blah, blah, blah because I was watching you, I didn't have to give myself direction anymore. You yes. were giving me direction. So I just, my body could be more empty in, in the doing. And that's great. I, I, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to get to is be able to shift from that place to then be able to drive the bus. Yeah. It's one thing to be a passenger on the bus and you know, you get there and hey, that was great. You know, I was able to work on a crossword puzzle. You know, I could I could get there and I didn't have to drive this time. But at some point, it's your turn to drive the bus. So uh, that we, we need to be able to shift gears into that as well. Yes, but since I don't get to that empty place all that often, it was really nice to experience it <laughs> for a longer Absolutely. period of time. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. Yes, <laughs> Richard, something. Um, what you said about the pendulum, uh, pen, <laughs> what's that pendulum? pendulum. <laughs> and it made me think also about a swing set um, where uh -huh. you swing up and then right, there's yeah, that yeah. point. And it seems to me that, so I started, that's what I started looking for if I was looking for anything. I was trying in every transition of movement from one to the other, from the yin to the yang, there's one point which is truly empty, but only one infinitesimal point. But that's what I'm starting to look for now. Fabulous. 
That's that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. That's the, if that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so there is that there's that moment where you go, you know, it, it's right there in the classic. They talk about when the when the yang reaches its peak. What does it do? It turns into yin, right? And that's that's exactly yes. what we're talking about there. There's that there's that point. Oh, then we're we're moving the other direction, and spotting that point that infinitesimal emptiness of that transition enables you to better mobilize your chi. Now, every move we make passes through that point. Yes. Yes. And the more we can bring mindfulness to that moment, then it becomes meditation. Scott, you have something? Yeah. Um, uh, when the pendulum thing was fantastic. That really brought it home for me. But what Richard is saying, and when you think about it, when you're, you know, playing it, when you're on a swing, there's that moment of weightlessness, right? When you get to the top of this, when you get to the top of the right, arc. Right. And right. that's, that's the feeling that's, yeah. So thank you, Richard. That's a great visual. Yeah. Yeah. There is that moment of, of like, oh, that emptiness. We hit, ah, we're, we are defying gravity for our, for, you know, a fraction of a second, and then whoa, we're back into it. You know, we're head, we're we were young. We went the peak of young, and now we're going yin, and uh, and that's and that is what we're doing in every movement of the form, and beyond that. Then we start wrapping it up. Okay, so well, one more anyway, one more question if there is one, and we'll start wrapping this thing up. One more, okay, everybody good? Okay, great, everybody. This was lovely. Thank you all so much. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Maria. Thank Thank you. Rick. This was very awesome. Thank you. Happy Great birthday day. tomorrow. Oh, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. The big 7 0. The big 7 0. Oh, congratulations. Who's born 10? The Taoists say life begins at 70. <laughs> <laughs>